Happy spring game eve to everybody at Ohio State and happy open practice today to Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham, and me, Austin Ward. It is Freaky Friday. Let's get reckless with some bold predictions about things that we really have no way of knowing what's going to happen in an exhibition on Saturday at noon in the Horseshoe. Um, Burn, let's start with you. Mm. Mm. Give me three rushing touchdowns for James Peoples on Saturday. Ooh, that's a lot of scoring. Yeah. I figure that they're going to open it up a little bit in the spring game. They want a lot of people to show up. It's going to be a beautiful day if people in the Columbus metro area or anywhere around Ohio haven't heard that they would like you to be there in person. Um, Ryan Day said on Wednesday that they'd heard that there was 50,000 pre-sale tickets. I imagine they're going to get another 25 to 30 walk-up, but I think they should get 50 walk-up and never, they should hit 100,000 on Saturday because why mm. the heck not? Um, and if you're going to do that, if you're going to be imploring people to come out with their their fun little promos that they're doing on the Ohio State official Twitter account and trying to get all the players involved, well, then I think you owe the people a product that they want to watch. And so I think you're going to see some high-flying, high-scoring stuff. Uh, and rather than initially going with something Jeremiah Smith related, I do think the running game is going to get a healthy dose of, of work, uh, especially for these young guys. Ryan Day said on Thursday that he was going to uh, these young guys are going to be tackled, so I, I want to see them get some real work in. Uh, they're going to they're going to let James Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon and T.C. Caffey be hit and tackled. So uh, I think if that's the case, you're going to see some some real efforting from the running backs. Three touchdowns from James Peoples. I was really relieved on Wednesday when Ryan Day talked about the format and what he wanted to see out of Saturday when he talked about getting the veterans out, the thousand rep guys uh, to the sideline. We know who those are going to be. The Emeka Bukas, the JT Tuimolo, Oz, Jack Sawyers, those people of the world, Travion, Quinshawn Judkins. They don't need to go out there and go live. I understand that. The The fact that the second half then or the second quarter on, I don't. We'll, we'll figure that out, I guess, on Saturday, Bill. The fact that Ryan Day was talking about going live and letting guys get hit and be tackled to the ground was music to my ears because having – Everyone play a thudded practice in the spring game was what made, I think, the last couple of years uh, so boring and turned at least me off. I won't speak for everyone who went to the spring game, but getting a chance to see them play real football is a big deal. And I'm really relieved to have heard that. Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's been some tackling the last couple of years, but not, not a ton. Um, and it's like kind of like happened randomly and, and like sporadically throughout the game which is kind of odd so this this does sound like it's going to be more or less like a real football game um once once those guys pro probably after the first two drives i would guess once those guys get out of the game um you know the clocks will be different <laughs> 12 to 15 minute quarters i thought was a fun, <laughs> funny way to describe <laughs> the timing of the game and then have a running clock um in, in the fourth quarter so it won't be exactly like a real game but but i think what we should be watching will mostly resemble uh, real football, which will be nice. Um, I also had a rushing-related um, bold prediction based off of what Ryan Day was talking about on Wednesday because he was asked about the, um, I guess, like how, how how urgent they feel the need is to go into the transfer portal and find another running back now that Dallin Hayden is leaving. And he said, like, we want five and we have five, which is including TC Caffey in that conversation. I thought that was a strong endorsement of the kind of player that they think the TC is. So I actually think the TC is going to lead like all rushers in this game. And I think he's going to have the most rushing touchdowns in this game. Mm. Um, I, I kind of think they're like going to try to showcase him a little bit in a weird way to like show that it, and maybe they will add a running back, but, but if they don't um, to show that, like they believe in this kid and, and think that if, you know, God forbid they had to go that far into depth that, that they have a guy that they think could actually play for them if, if they needed to. So, um, and plus, like, you know, it's usually a showcase of, of sorts for walk-on players anyway and, and an opportunity for those guys to get the ball more than they would, obviously, during the regular season. So I, I think T.C. Caffey is going to have a pretty large workload um, in this game. So I'll, I'll put him down for um, – I don't think it's going to be like a, like a robust rushing total because I think they'll probably end up throwing the ball more on, on Saturday. But let's call it uh, 90 yards for T.C. Caffey and two touchdowns to lead all rushers. I want to – spin off of Bill's prediction here and and jump in before Austin speaks again because I have a truly bold prediction and that is that at the end of the spring game they will let TC Caffey know that he's being put on scholarship that's my that's that's the bold nice. piece I love for that. TC I like that 
Because yes. they have what do they got? 83 guys on the roster right now, 84, 85. They're yeah, without there's so, there's some I, I'm a little uncertain on some of the specialists, but yeah, it's like 83 or 84. Yeah, they're gonna lose another probably five or six guys after this after spring football. I don't think they're gonna get back to 85 without adding some walk-ons on scholarship. So I think they're gonna have that opportunity and present it to him like so. Before the broadcast ends, just to get a little viral moment on Big Fox. That's what I would do were I in charge, which I'm unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. Someday. I'd be like, here's your scholarship, TC. Just like that? Oh, yeah. you blow it to him. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was how that worked. <laughs> That's how scholarships are awarded. Yes. It's like pixie dust? Yeah. Huh. Surprised you didn't uh, know. I, I'm learning something every time on Freaky Friday. That's the whole point of the show. I have a question for you guys. Before. I, this is quarterback related. And it's true freshman quarterback related. But I would like to know, first of all, I get the sense that Ryan Day, or I got the sense on Wednesday, that he didn't feel like he needed to see a lot from Will Howard on Saturday. And that Devin Brown may be in that same boat or close to it. Did you guys feel the same way that this is going to be a Lincoln Keenholz and Julian Sayan affair? Or... Um, do you think it'll still be rotating that entire group through the way they've done throughout camp? Uh, Bill, what did you think? Um, I kind of feel like they're going to rotate. Um, and most like I, I probably would agree with the thought that you maybe don't need to see a ton from Will Howard, but I kind of think you want to put Devin Brown out there only because like we haven't seen him throw a ton of passes like in front of a crowd. So right. um, if you're going to play Devin, then I think you probably have to play Will. So I, th I think we'll see. The four, like those two, Lincoln Keenholz and Julian saying, like rotate a little bit. I'm just uncertain on Aaron Nolan only because the last time we were in there watching practice, um, he didn't do a whole lot. And Ryan Day sort of like suggested that um, he was like kind of working through something, which is why he didn't play a whole lot. So I, I'm not sure what to expect from air, but um, otherwise, I, I think they're going to rotate the quarterbacks like not not evenly, but we'll see all of them. I think first quarter, we'll see only Devin Brown and Will Howard. And then after that, we won't see them at all. And we'll see Lincoln Keenholz and Julian saying the rest of the day. That's the way I would expect it. All right. With some some opportunity for Aaron Nolan to get out there and do some stuff. But as far as the like competition stuff, the real like in-game keeping score, I, I don't think we would see Aaron Nolan probably till the middle of the running clock fourth quarter. Okay. That's how I would. I think you guys are both right. And I think that's why Julian Sain is going to throw three touchdowns on Saturday afternoon. Uh, if you get those top two guys out of the mix, and Berm, to your point, if they if they want to put on a physical show that gets people tuned in and coming back to future spring games, I don't think that means that you run the football and and play like super physical. You tackle while also throwing the football a lot, which is the easiest way uh, to get things going in a spring setting and get people excited. And since Ohio State is doing absolutely nothing to diminish the uh, hype and fervor and excitement around Julian Sayan, and you still leave some of those good receivers out there, and you're maybe not throwing against Denzel Burke or Davis and Igbenosin, which there's already been some evidence that he can do that. Julian Sand can do that and still move the football against the ones. Ryan Day confirmed some of that himself again on Wednesday. I think that's where the explosiveness comes, and I think that's where the excitement will come. And then uh, Ryan Day will face uh, three months of conversation about Julian Sane being even more in the mix for the starting competition uh, battle than uh, he suggested he would be on Wednesday, which will be fun for everybody or also tiresome by August. I do, I do think that that conversation about Julian saying we'll, we'll reach a fever pitch by like mid, mid, mid afternoon on Saturday. Yeah, I'm bracing for that. <laughs> and as people could see, I wrote about that on Friday morning at OhioState.Rivals.com as well. Just like not just taking the black stripe off after nine practices, but the way that Ryan Day talked about it. Like, I don't think that it means that he's going to pass either Will Howard or Devin Brown, but the fact that we include him in that conversation now is already significant enough. And a big spring game with people, however many people tune in to Fox, I don't know. However many people wind up in the horseshoe on Saturday, I don't know. It'll be a minimum of 50,000, but probably is like much, much closer to 80. Um, all those people are going to leave with impressions of Julian Sayan, and I bet that they're positive. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to start bold predictions by talking about Jeremiah Smith. So I wanted to wait nine minutes and 50 seconds into the show before I did it. 
Uh, and now I'm going to talk about Jeremiah Smith, who, if they are going to come out and, and check it around the yard a little bit, uh, I don't think that there's a guy more uh, appropriately suited to get the fans like really going crazy on Saturday than letting Jeremiah Smith get out there and work and taking some deep shots to him. Uh, I think overall you're going to see like four long touchdown passes on the day. Maybe it's Bryson Rogers with one, Carnell Tate with one. Brand. I don't expect that we'll see much of Brandon Innes based on how little he's uh, played in the last couple of weeks, but uh, I do think that Jeremiah Smith is going to provide two of those, and uh, I don't know if Carnell Tate or Bryson Rogers is the other. Who knows? Jaden Ballard obviously has an opportunity. There's other guys out there, but Jeremiah Smith will, as you said, Austin, because you're not expecting to see Denzel Burke out there very much or Davis Nigbenos not there very much, and probably not even Jermaine Matthews or or Jordan Hancock all that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means that Jeremiah Smith is going to be matched up against true freshman corners or walk-ons, and that is not going to be fair uh, <laughs> to anyone. So I think you just put him out there and you say, let's see how far we can throw it and see how fast Jeremiah can run and get it. And I think you'll see two touchdowns of over 50 yards to Jeremiah Smith on Saturday at the spring game. So if Buckeyes fans are interested in their first glimpse of uh, the future top five NFL pick, the best way to do that is to go to Ohio Stadium on Saturday for $10. Mm. Are you on the payroll this week or what? Are you going to cut How much of every ticket sold are you getting? <laughs> and it's possible. This man's over here acting like Paul Heyman. It's the NIA world, buddy. Anything's possible. All right. Uh, have we done all have outside you ever heard people call NIL nil? No. I mean, that. I mean, I guess. I was just wondering. Other other than um, Scotty Middleton when he had the typo in his uh <laughs> uh, transfer announcement when he called it eligibility, which is really what it should be called, I think. Yeah, maybe it wasn't a typo. Maybe, he, yeah, it was intentional. Um, I'm going to do a defensive bowl prediction because I think every one we've done so far has been on the offensive side, right? Um, I am, like a lot of people, very uh, excited, I think is the right word, about the potential for Ohio State's linebacker crew this fall. And, like, I don't think Cody Simon plays a ton on Saturday. Um, I'm actually curious how they treat CJ Hicks and Sonny Styles, they'll play, but I think they might get more of a veteran treatment as well. And I, I think like the guys we'll see the most are like gay powers and Arvell Reese. And I think Arvell Reese is going to be like a maniac in, in the spring game. Um, especially if they're going to tackle more, more than we're accustomed to seeing in the last few years. And I, I don't know. Um, they have some issues when they do like the, when they don't actually break up the team. To, with the official stat keeping. So I don't know if we'll have official stats on what Arvell Reese does. So um, I guess that makes this bold prediction easier uh, for me to get right. So I think that Arvell Reese will have 10 tackles, uh, fumble recovery, and an interception. Boy, that is bold. Especially if you get, but if you get to count the tackles yourself, then this one. thats I was going to say Bill's yeah. notebook is going to have that no matter what. That's, yeah, right. That's exactly the, right. That it already has. It's already way. in there. Yeah. yeah, it's already one third of the way checked off. <laughs> I don't know if people are going to love it though if they see any fumbles in the spring game. Well, it can be like uh, I don't know. Some uh, no offense, a walk on ball carrier. It's not TC Caffey. You see, ball. Bill, I'm so glad you and I at times we're so simpatico. People watching the podcast daily on this freaky Friday morning, they're going to see weekend kickoff in about three hours. And there's an extensive it's a bowl con- P right there. There's an extensive conversation in that <laughs> show between myself and the honorable Austin J. Ward and Robert Carpenter, where I suggest that fumbles are going to happen on Saturday or Friday, Saturday, whatever day. And I said, it's it's you're gonna have first time quarterbacks handing the ball off to first time running backs. Like this there's there's things that happen. Yeah, be you sure. said now, now that we know they're tackling, like it's even more uh, more likely. All right, spoiler alert. You said there were going to be like a minimum of three fumbles. I said, so I think that there. tells you that that would Hicks be a problem a for them. I said CJ Hicks was going to have a fumble re- recovery for a touchdown. Then you said there were going to be multiple fumbles. There's going to be 10 fumbles. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty drill. bad. Yeah, fumble drill. That's what I would do. I would have a fumble drill. Put, uh, put, some, put some hot grease all over that pig skin and woo, hey, just let these boys go. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
Ugh. Not, not really. I'm not sure I want to either. Um, we should let Burn program the spring game next year. If you, if you created like American Gladiator sections in the in the horseshoe mm-hmm. with different football related drills and events, that would be the way to go. You have like a a, a mud pit where the football's in there. And you let three guys go in, and whoever comes out with the ball and scores, their their team wins ten points. Like that's the way to do this. I think it'd be great if they would set up an assault course. Like I, it's too yes. bad that that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, if if you had instead of the little, uh, you know, t- no, you could st- you could still have the quarterbacks up there like shooting the yeah, tennis but with, balls with the football though. I mean, I want it with the football. Oh, huh, okay. Uh, he wants to knock somebody out. <laughs> that seems a little more extreme. <laughs> But the only way uh, I have. Okay. Well, I really wanted to pick Arvell Reese to have like four sacks in this game. So I'm not going yeah. to be able to do that now because Bill has nice. already loaded up the st- his own personal stat sheet with it. So instead, I will in- look to the defensive line where Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson are going to play a lot. And I imagine a fair number of those reps are not going to be coming against Josh Simmons or Josh Fryer, which, um, to borrow from a little bit of Berm's terminology with Jeremiah Smith's matchups, that's problematic. Those two guys would be starting defensive ends and very productive at virtually every other school in the Big Ten, probably around the country, maybe not both, but one or the other could find a spot, be starting. They're very, very good is my point, uh, and they haven't had an opportunity because they're behind two other very good guys in Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimoloau. Spring game opportunity for them to shine uh, is going to be right there for the taking. Let's let's see if Jim Knowles blitzes Arvell Reese or CJ Hicks or Sonny Styles as much as I thought that he probably would, or at least as much as he did in the student appreciation day scrimmage. If he doesn't, then the defensive ends will feast. If he does, then they're gonna have to all have a race to the quarterback because it'll be a lot of jail breaks and open season on Ohio State's quarterbacks. Nobody wants to see that, but it'd be another encouraging sign for the silver bullets. That's the give and take of the spring game. I'll say uh, four sacks then for the combination of Kenyatta Jackson and Caden Curry. I thought it was, I thought it was funny on Wednesday, Austin, when you asked Ryan Day who won the defense was giving the offense the most problems, and he said Jim Knowles. <laughs> it was yeah, it was good. a great answer. <laughs> Do you think they're going to blitz like the way we saw them blitz on the Student Appreciation Day? Because it can make for an ugly spring game on one hand, but on the other hand, it could be like really exciting to watch those linebackers do that kind of stuff. I kind of, if it stays competitively close on the scoreboard then yes, because I think Jim Knowles will absolutely want to win. And he's like, that'd be bragging rights into the summer or into saddle up on Saturday night to give Ryan Day and Chip Kelly and Justin Fry and those guys a hard time. Like, I think that they they have some personal investment in that. And Jim Knowles seems to take pride in the defense being able to be the front foot for Ohio State right now, which spent mm-hmm. a decade being much better known for its offense, most of that decade anyway. Uh, I, I think that he it gets a little personal for those guys because we're we're talking about really high level high achieving coaches and if if he has to just sit back all day in base personnel and base schemes and vanilla schemes i think he would be incredibly agitated by that heading into the summer i do think he'll blitz i think i think if if what you're saying plays out and it is a closer game and then like it's to the point where like you're actually trying to win and Jim Knowles still has Arvell Reese and Gabe Powers on the field blitzing against Ohio State's like third offensive line. <laughs> you will you will get your four sacks from Arvell Reese. <laughs> yeah, that could get get a little ugly. Austin, you're half right though on this prediction on the four, oh, <laughs> on the four sacks from the defensive ends. But where you're wrong is it's not going to be Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson because they're not going to play much either. Uh, so it's going to be four. They don't sacks. have that many ends, Berm. It's going to be four sacks from Mitchell Melton and Edric Houston. Okay. So just to be clear. Um, and to stay on the defensive side of the ball, I want to bring up a name we haven't talked about much, but I do I am I'm penciling in an interception with a touchdown for whom? Jalen McLean. That's who Uh-oh. Jalen McLean, Ohio State true freshman safety from New Jersey. I think that uh, he's going to be on the field a whole heck of a lot on Saturday because as we've talked about, the depth is sus. At safety, you're not going to see Caleb Downs. You're not going to see Lathan Ransom. You're not going to see Malik uh, Hartford doing a lot, if anything. And I think that Jalen McLean is going to make himself into a guy this weekend. Remember two years ago when Kai Stokes had the big spring game and I was like, whoa, dude, we got to like, whoa. Like, this is Jalen McLean doing the whoa, dude. You got to be like, whoa. 
Well, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm remembering two years ago and thinking that Mitchell Melton is not going to play a lot in this spring game. Well, I mean, he's the sixth. He's like the fifth defensive end. So and he, and, and as he said, I mean, he said three weeks ago, like he feels like last year was his freshman year. So I think, yeah, he needs to play. Okay. So, whoa, dude, like, whoa, you know? I don't th- also I don't think we have a lot of 13 year olds who watch the podcast daily. So you can actually say suspect. You can say the whole word. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't have time for that. Okay, I'm a busy man. And I don't have time to waste syllables where one syllable will suffice. So okay. anyway, that's fair. Elon McLean, pick six. Why well, do big talk when little talk works just fine? <laughs> <laughs> Who gets it? Uh, do I get one more bull pee? Yeah, if you want it, you don't have to <laughs> take it. No, I, got, I got one more. I got one more. We can go. We can. We can do this all day. Twenty four hours straight. No, we um, don't. We have to go to practice. <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning. Uh, we uh, spring game should be a time for shenanigans. Um, so I think that the offense is going to line up in a big personnel package and throw a touchdown pass to Katie McDonald. Oh, baby. <laughs> Which like. Maybe conventional wisdom is like, why would you do that in spring games? Save it for when you get into that package during the season. But I actually think when you do that kind of stuff and put a defensive lineman in the field, on the field, like opposing defenses are actually like alert to that and probably I don't think would be caught as off guard by it. Um, so they're going to run a little spider two Y banana with Katie oh. McDonald, with Katie McDonald leaking into the flat and catching a touchdown pass. It's getting Market. hot in here. Yeah. Oh, my. I like it. I wonder. I would pay to see it. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'd pay ten bucks to watch that. Ah. Uh, you know what? Everyone should pay ten dollars to watch <laughs> by going to the Ohio State spring game on Saturday at noon in Ohio Stadium. The weather's gonna be beautiful. I've heard it's gonna be almost seventy degrees. It's supposed to be sunny. Why would you not go if you're in Ohio? That's what I want to know. Is it so is it like a dollar of every ticket sale goes in your pocket or how's all I'm it? suggesting is that it's well, gotta be higher. It's gotta be he's gotta be getting fifteen percent of kickbacks. What else minutes. do you have to do on Saturday? No one's getting married. It's April thirteenth. Okay. Well the Masters is on Berm. It's moving. The Masters is, is four days worth of stuff. And guess what? It also runs from nine in the morning until like seven o'clock at night. You got plenty of time to watch the Masters. You only get one shot, one opportunity. To watch the Ohio State spring football game. Now, that's up to you. You gonna capture it? Are you gonna capture it or let it slip? (laughs) Uh all right. I predict that Ohio State will get ninety five thousand people in the horseshoe. They will not Mm. get this to uh six figures, and Burham will be missing out on, I guess, I don't know, roughly $6,500 $6,500 of kickbacks by not selling those tickets, despite his best efforts to do so every day in every day in every show this week. There's I got to get to the bottom of this. We're going to have to FOIA Berm's emails to see what his contract was with Ohio State for the spring game. <laughs> nope. Nope. All right. Cool. I don't think we can. That's, those are public that's, record. Are they? Yeah. Probably. Cool. Maybe not. I'm not sure that I want to see everything else that's in Berm's email, so I'll just... <laughs> I'll take his word for it that it's nothing but the goodness of his heart and the fact that I he believe used to that people want this Ohio State football program to succeed and they want people to know that they're good fans. This is the chance to do it. Just show up. You got nothing else to do. You can still get home and mow the grass. Okay. The game's over by like two o'clock. Sun doesn't set till I think 8 18. That's plenty of time. <laughs> 8 18? I believe it's right around there. <clears throat> okay. Wow. All right. Well, I don't have anything else to add to that, except that the spring game is Saturday at noon and you can get tickets for $10. Uh, and I get nothing in re- exchange for that information. I can't speak for anybody else on this panel, but uh, we'll be there. We'll also be in the horseshoe <clears throat> Friday morning to watch Ohio State's 14th practice of spring camp. It is open. We will talk about it when it's over and we'll get set a little bit more. I'll boldly predict that on Snap Judgments, Berm tells you to go to the spring game on Saturday. So that's bold prediction number four. For Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham, I am Austin Ward. Have a great weekend. But we'll still talk to you a couple more times today on the podcast. Perfect. Excellent time for him to cut out. We hope everyone had a great day. Everyone have a great day. And uh, we'll see you Saturday at the Horseshoe.